Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to be going over using total runout on a cone and whether or not that's legal. So the reason this is coming up is that I had a colleague propose something like this where they were going to control a cone with a total runout to a datum axis. When I first saw this I was not sure what to do with it because I had never seen something like that before and I looked through the standard and we had a bit of a discussion about it because I looked through the standard and these are, at least in the runout section of the standard, the only uses of the total runout in, in the figures. So as you can see, all of the uses in the standard are either on perpendicular faces to the axis or faces that are uh, running parallel to the axis. So my initial reaction was, okay, well, I don't think we can do this, but then I wanted to think a little bit more because although it's not in the standard, right at the front, it does have a note about figures and the sentence that's interesting is this one right here. And it says that the absence of a figure or illustration or figure illustrating the desired application is neither reason to assume inapplicability nor basis for a drawing rejection. So what that means is that although something may not be shown in the standard, it doesn't mean it's necessarily illegal per the standard. So just because total runout is not shown on a cone um, in, the, in the illustrations, it doesn't mean it's necessarily illegal. So let's look at the definition, or let's look at some of the, the paragraphs regarding uh, total runout. And this is one that had some very interesting features. And some important uh, components of this, or some important words that come out of this paragraph, are constructed around a datum axis and angularity and taper. So if, if you're looking at this, you're reading this, and you're saying, well, a total runout can be applied to a surface constructed around a datum axis controlling uh, angularity and taper, why should it not be able to control a cone? Because in figure 9-1, it says... It points at a, a conical face and specifically calls it a service constructed around a datum feature. So this, to me, feels like a lot of um, a lot of evidence that controlling a cone with a total runout should be totally allowed per the standard. So what would the inspection of this look like? Well, we need full indicator movement, and of course the inspection shown in the standard is, they don't mean this is the only way to inspect, but let's let's go forward using their their version of this inspection just to illustrate how, how one might inspect a cone using total runout. So you need full indicator movement, you need the indicator fixed normal to the tolerance surface, and then the indicator must translate along the entire tolerance surface. So I see two ways you could do this. You could rotate the, or you could tilt the entire uh, part that you're inspecting to the basic angle relative to some uh, surface and then translate a indicator along that surface. Or you could translate the, the dial indicator at the basic angle relative to the axis along the surface. So a somewhat satisfying conclusion to all this was that I did some Googling and I actually did find a, a forum post on engtips.com talking about this from uh, 2012. And I read through most of it. I don't think I got to the end. Uh, or maybe I did get to the end. It's only two pages. But the consensus, at least at this time, was some people were for it, some people were against it. So at this point, I feel fairly comfortable using a total runout on a tapered surface on a drawing, but let me know what you think. Have a good one.